having AT&T or Verizon service is like your parents telling you you can't unlock your bootloader or you like it in the ass. Hi folks, that's on Android.com where we get on Android every day. Uh, anyway, I wanted to talk to you guys today about carriers. Uh, because every time I go on Twitter, people are asking me, Max, how do you root my AT&T Note 4? Max, how do I root my Verizon S6? And Sally, every time I have to tell you, AT&T and Verizon have locked bootloaders. Because of that, we haven't had a root method for the Note 4 for the AT&T and the Verizon version. Now, one of the main reasons why people root and install custom ROMs uh, is that they can get uh, unlock the Wi-Fi tether. Now, if you're not in one of those family share plans for AT&T or Verizon, then you'll have to pay like extra 30 bucks for a Wi-Fi hotspot. Most countries outside the US, they have this Wi-Fi tether option as part of your data program. And AT&T and Verizon make so much money off that. One of the ways that can stop us from getting our tether that we should have is by blocking root. And that is why they have locked bootloaders. That is really the main reason. Now in the US, there's no loss to protect consumers. Um, so carriers take advantage of that. And thus we have no route for AT&T Verizon. So what can you do? I repeat this all the time. That's why I decided to make a video about it. If you have AT&T, then you can go ahead and buy the T-Mobile version of it, unlock the SIM, and use your AT&T SIM on the T-Mobile device. You get exactly the same service from AT&T, uh, 4G LT, data, voice, HSPA, they all work perfectly. So that's what I tell people, that you should buy the T-Mobile version and use your AT&T SIM. Now, if you go to T-Mobile site, they might not let you buy the phone outright unless you buy one of their contracts or one of their services. You can always get around that by trying eBay, uh, Amazon, and other retailers who do sell T-Mobile versions. For unlocking SIM, it is really easy. Uh, you can go to sellonlocker.net, pay like 20, 30 bucks. Within six to 12 hours, they'll send you an unlock code. Simply put your AT&T SIM in, and boom shakalaka, you got your AT&T SIM working on a T-Mobile phone. The greatest benefits of having a T-Mobile phone over an AT&T phone, of course, is not having a lock bootloader. This means you can easily root the phone, install custom ROMs like CM12. Now with the lock bootloader like the Note 3, even if you do root it, because of the lock bootloader, you cannot install AOSP ROMs like Sinogen Mod 12 uh, or any AOSP ROMs. If you don't know what AOSP ROM is, go Google what is AOSP high on Android. You'll find my video explanation. Now one of the cool things about AOSP ROMs is that a Wi-Fi hotspot comes unlocked by default which is pretty much everywhere else in the world except in the US. And many of you don't live in the US who are watching with this video and you're wondering, why are they so nuts about Wi-Fi tether here? You would only understand it how evil AT&T and Verizon is if you lived in the US. Now let's talk about Verizon. How do you use Verizon phones? Well, if you really wanted to root and install custom ROMs on your Android devices, um, you would just really have to leave Verizon. Even their Verizon Nexus devices are locked. Like, locked like hell. I think you actually buy the regular Unlock Nexus 6 if you buy from Google, then you can activate it on Verizon. That may be your only option, getting an Unlock Nexus device and activating them on Verizon. I'm not sure, I know you can do it on Sprint, I've seen WW Josh do do it. So if you have Verizon and you want root on your latest phones like the S6 Note 4, you really have no choice. Even the older Note 3 and S4 and S5, um, they're all getting locked down, uh, with, especially with the newer firmware update. Now there's actually no way to root these devices without a unlocked bootloader. Also, you can get a developer's edition of Verizon phones. Um, that basically gives you an unlocked bootloader version. I think it's actually about the same cost. They don't have contracts or anything, but you can go ahead and just buy the phone outright. And then you'll be able to root, install AOSP ROMs, unlock Wi-Fi tether, and do all the stuff that you want. But usually developers version always come out a couple months later. So I don't think the S6 and S6 Edge are out even yet. But if you want to go that route, you can do that and keep your Verizon service. Actually, that's the only way you'll be able to keep Verizon service and be able to root and install custom ROMs from now on. So don't buy the retail version. If you buy the retail version, it's like buying a brick. That's why my last Verizon purchase is the Galaxy Note 3. After that, I did announce on Twitter and on my YouTube channel that I will no longer buy Verizon devices until they unlock the bootloaders. I mean, somebody has to stand up for them. So my best suggestion is that if you have Verizon service and you want root, I boycott them at all costs. Maybe where you live, Verizon is the only service you can get stable service. 
then I would say get the developer edition. But otherwise, you should try other networks. You can go on AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint. You can get AT&T service and get the T-Mobile phone if AT&T has good signal where you live. Now, if you have great T-Mobile signals, like where I live, I get very good 4G LTE now, you can just go ahead and switch to T-Mobile. On T-Mobile, you can get unlimited data, uh, Wi-Fi, voice, calling, everything for 100 bucks for two people, two lines. That's actually pretty good. Right now I'm paying 100 bucks for one line on AT&T for five gigs of data. I just have a line on AT&T now because I actually need an account to have access to all my previous uh, billing for tax purposes. And plus I need to do the speed test for you guys uh, every once in a while. Sprint, I have two lines. Uh, I have a, two gigs of data for two phones. I'm paying about 80 bucks, so that's not bad. Uh, but the, if you want to, I, th I think if you want to get unlimited, you'll spend more than T-Mobile. But Sprint has been getting better, and then they stopped getting better. They have that new 4G LTE, the Spark thing, and it's actually not that fast where I live. It would really depend on where you live. Um, the Spark, I heard, is much faster in the East Coast and the Midwest where Sprint is based. It's like they don't care about us in the West Coast. All right, Verizon, I have one line, unlimited, $80 a month. Now I'm keeping that because I have an unlimited plan. I bought this plan like, I think four or five years ago, and I bought it when they had the unlimited. So I get unlimited data. Actually, it's a pretty good deal if you have that. I can use like 20, 30 gigs, no problem, and it, I don't have to pay extra. So that's why I'm keeping that line, 80 bucks. Uh, if sometimes I go to shows and stuff, I may need to use a lot of bandwidth like at CES. I used up like 30 gigs of T-Mobile service in a couple days. To wrap it up, if you want to root and install custom ROMs, the two best carriers are T-Mobile and Sprint. Now, if you want to talk about having the freedom of getting any phone you want, like an unlocked phone, then T-Mobile is the best. You know why? Because T-Mobile is GSM based. Pretty much 99% of the phones, unlocked phones in the world are GSM, which means you can go ahead and buy an unlocked phone in Thailand, on eBay, Craigslist, pop in your SIM and boom shakalaka, you got a working phone. I'm not so much with Sprint phones, you'll have to buy a Sprint phone to actually work with Sprint's phone service. You can't use any unlocked phones on Sprint's network. So that's one thing bad about it with Sprint and Verizon, that you have to use CDMA devices on Sprint and Verizon. They're like the only two networks in the world right now using CDMA. What the fudge? Korea, South Korea used to be the biggest CDMA user. Now they actually moved a lot of it out to GSM. I think actually it's mostly GSM now. Also, if you don't use a lot of data, you might want to go with a prepay line. I have a line, I have a couple lines actually on T-Mobile prepaid. It's a really good deal. I've got Peony's phone on prepaid uh, because she doesn't really use, you know, cellular data because she's always home using Wi-Fi. And I just want to give her a number so I can call her and she can call me when I'm not home or message me. It only costs me like three bucks a month. I think that's for a basic like 30 minute voice. Um, you do have to pay based on text messages and phone calls, but I mean, we don't really talk that much because I'm always home. Um, but in the days I'm gone, I mean, you know, the bill will go up to like five, six bucks, but that's like nothing. It's definitely worth it. If you're always on Wi-Fi, then you can just go ahead and go with a prepaid plan. Now, if you talk a lot, they do have um, higher tier programs you can use, but it's still gonna be cheaper. Now, one thing I found the biggest difference between prepaid and uh, big networks like AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, Verizon. Uh, every time you get a bill, let's say it's 80 bucks on Verizon, they add like a $10 bill for some kind of FTC charge, another $10 bill uh, for additional network thingy, and then another $10 bill, and your $80 actually becomes like 110 bucks. It's like on every freaking network. Sprint charges like extra 10 bucks per phone for premium 4G LTE service. Um, so all these feed has up. On one of my lines for prepaid T-Mobile, I get like two gigs of 4G LTE data, uh, unlimited voice, text, 40 bucks a month. That's a straight up 40 bucks a month. They don't add anything, just 40 bucks a month. So that's the huge difference. When carriers say it's 100 bucks, you have to add like 10, 20 more percent. So it really ends up, uh, if you get a prepaid plan, you end up saving a ton more money. All right, another note about prepaid plans. Now, prepaid plans are great um, because the governments can't really track you. If you're a drug dealer, spy, or somebody who wants to be totally anonymous, you can get those prepaid plans and just refill as needed at your 7-Eleven store. You don't even have to have any personal information 
uh, related with your prepaid plan. Now this is great, governments can't track you. The NIS has been probably tapping your messages and you know, whatnot. If you wanna go completely anonymous, that is probably the way to go. You can pay everything in cash, just hide from the world. You know, so that's another benefit of it. You know, especially if you live in the US, one of the biggest rights of being an American is that you have the right to your privacy. And we see we're all hooked up to this grid. You're watching this video, I'm making this video. And all this information is way too exposed. You know, you need to protect yourself better, especially if you do need to protect it. You never know what kind of hackers out there are stealing your info and using it for something else. So in that sense, prepaid is definitely the way to go. Now, one thing I can say about the regular service of T-Mobile that's better than prepaid, um, you get Wi-Fi calling. I'm not sure if it works on prepaid, but the Wi-Fi calling is great. Like if you go travel outside the country, you can still use the Wi-Fi calling. You don't have to pay for international charges. And as long as you have Wi-Fi outside, you can make calls as if you're here. And you can also receive calls on your US number, uh, even if you're in Thailand, Africa, Europe, whatever. Also Sprint now has Wi-Fi calling, so same thing. So those are some things you may wanna think about. So there's a ton of different options, but let's get back to the main point of the day. Um, basically, if you want root and custom ROMs, just avoid AT&T and Verizon if you can. Just cancel your service, move to another provider. Now just make sure that provider that you're moving to has great service. If they don't, then you will wanna try all the alternatives I showed you. Anyway, do tell me what you think of the carriers and uh, if you're using a certain carrier that you like a lot, um, do leave in the comments why and where you live, such as city, San Francisco, California, and share your thoughts with everyone else so this will become a good data for everybody else uh, who lives in other parts, since I can only tell you the service here in the SF Bay Area. Anyway, that was how to choose a correct carrier if you want root and custom ROMs and really have control over your phone and your life. And do let me know if you want more series like this. I'll definitely try to do more of these. And have a great Saturday. Take your kids out somewhere nice if you have kids. <laughs> If you don't have kids, go out to the bar or the clubs tonight and have a beer on me. If you have a dog like me, don't forget to take her out to walk. And I'll have more stuff coming. As always, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or Google+. And as always, I'll stay on Android.